Welcome to Among the Lilies. I'm your host, Cameron Frad, and I want to share with you some of the craziness about my past week. Um, but in particular, I'm going to be talking about um, just how acceptable I feel like e euthanasia has become in our society. So um, yeah, I have a friend who, anyhow, I'm going to get there, but first I'm going to tell you my week and how that went. Okay. So we have a dog. He's more like a giant teddy bear, maybe, or a really small bear, depending on how you look at it. I will have to put a picture of him up on here so you can see him, but he is a wonderful, beautiful dog. Last week, he started acting funny. Like he ran into the wall. He was like crossing his legs as he walks. Um, and we got a little concerned. He fell down the stairs and we got concerned, but it was after the hours that the vet was already closed around 1 a.m. He couldn't even stand up. My son was sleeping in the same room as him and it's like he can't even stand up anymore. So we put him in the car and rushed him to um, like an all night emergency place. Um, we had called the night before we went to bed, we had called and it was going to be an eight hour wait just to be seen. And then they bring your animal in. You're not allowed to go in with them. Um, thanks, honey. Thanks. I just got my hair done. Um, and Matt's comp complimenting me on it from the other room. <laughs> thanks so much, honey. I appreciate that. Um, so anyhow, long story short with the dog, we take him in. My son and I are there all night and they put him on a pr stretcher, bring him in, run some tests, and the vet's talking to me over the phone and saying, um, we really think that you should admit him and we'll do like an MRI and CAT scan, all these things. And I'm like, how much is this going to be? And she's like, well, it, it, it could be upwards of $7,000. But the good news is we have a credit program that you can use and just pay it over time. I'm like, yeah, no, no, like I don't have that type of money let alone that type of money for my dog. I love my dog. He's wonderful. He is a great dog. He is a guard dog. He is friendly. The kids love him. Um, he protects our home. He's like an alarm system. People see him and seriously turn around and run the other way because he's intimidating looking. He has a, his head is the size of most dogs. Like his head's like that big. Anyhow, he's wonderful. But I'm like, no, like I'm not going to do that. I'm like, isn't there something else you could do? So we did blood tests. We did x-rays and she's, and I was like, could you just send me home with antibiotics, steroids, anything that could help with whatever this could be? And she's like, okay, but I need you to know that's not what we recommend. And I'm like, and what do you recommend? She's like, we recommend admitting and paying a bunch of money or euthanasia. And I was like, I'm sorry, you, you think that I should just kill my dog because he's sick? Like that's, I don't know, I want to say inhumane, but he's not a human, um, but that's not okay. Like he's a beautiful young dog. He's four years old. And good news is we brought him home. We've been giving him meds. He's getting better, but there's like two of us that have to help him up and down the stairs when he's having a rough time. But um, yeah, he's doing better and we're persevering and it's been a really long week. Um, but it made me think like, why, why did the vet think that was a more I don't know, acceptable way of treating him, like either spend all the money in the world and go into debt or kill him. Those are our two best options. No, no, I'm sorry. There's there's a lot in the middle there and bringing him home and loving him and taking care of him and giving him medicine seems like a much more logical option to me. I have a friend who recently, her father-in-law has been very, very sick and had cancer and he... Yeah, basically he knew he was going to die at some point, but the doctors are like, we don't know. Like you could die tomorrow, you could die next year, but you're going to die at some point. And he had decided for love of his children and grandchildren, he was going to go through with euthanasia, assisted suicide. He thought that was the best option. So my friend and her husband pleaded with him and said, please don't. Like the kids love you. We love you. Like, and he's like, I don't want to be a bother to anyone. I don't want to put anyone out. And they're like, you're not putting us out. We love you. Like, we understand that you're sick. You can come home and be with us. We will love you through this. We will take care of you. Um, I know people that have done this who have had dying relatives that they've just taken care of. Right now, I actually have a friend whose mom's in, um, in England. You could say a prayer for her um, who's dying. She's been very sick and very ill and... It is so beautiful, the pictures my friend sharing with me and showing me these beautiful images of her mom dying because there's all of her grandbabies around 
her bedside. There's her children taking care of her. Her her son's a priest and he's gotten permission to stay in the house with her and take care of her until she dies. And so she's been getting to receive communion every day. And so they were going outside for mass. Now she can't get out of bed. So they're doing mass around her bed with all the grandkids and her children and just family that love her. And it's really a beautiful thing. And seeing the look on her face, like she just has this beautiful smile. And yes, I think she's been sick for a while and she has suffered, but she is beautiful and radiant. And this suffering is not making her less human. It's making her, I don't know if it's making her more human, but it's making her holier for sure. And she's loving those around her and she's loving her family here in England, or she's over in England, but her family here in America, um, they're FaceTiming with and saying goodbyes. And it's really hard and there's a lot of tears, but it's beautiful as well. They're preparing her for meeting our Lord. Her son, who's a priest, has like hand handmade a coffin for her. Um, her daughter that lives here is a beautiful artist and she is um, drawing a picture of um, of Jesus. And um, I think it's the Good Shepherd. I don't know. It's a beautiful image of Jesus. She's going to draw something and it'll be on the holy cards for the funeral. But the whole family is gathered around her and, and like that is beautiful. Yes, it's inconvenient that she can't walk and her son has to pick her up, but it's also a privilege he loves serving his mom and taking care of her. Um, recently, I had a few friends whose parents passed away. One in particular is a good friend of mine. And just her talking about the gift it was to bathe her mom at the end, that she got to be with her, that she um, got to bathe her, and the gift that that was. She's, she just expressed such joy in taking care of her. Our world is allergic to suffering. We... I don't know, we're allergic to sickness and suffering. And so this friend of mine's father-in-law was like, no, 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 I want to spare you all of that. And I'm just going to go ahead and go through with the euthanasia. My doctor thinks it's a good idea. And I'm sorry, that's not a good idea. I think sometimes people think euthanasia is more loving or more charitable. Like someone's in pain. We should put them out. Like we should put them out of their misery. Well, no, I'm sorry. That's not like, yes, we don't want them to suffer, right? So that's why we have medicine for that. Like the doctors can give them medicine. That's why when you're really sick in the hospital, they give you a morphine drip and you just like press a button like this to get pain meds. So I'm not saying make people suffer without any help, but we have means to help people in their suffering so they're not in as much pain, right? But euthanasia is not the answer. The Here, I have the catechism quote, I think over here on... Ooh. There was some cool thing that Matt showed me how to do on here, and I don't know how to do it anymore, so never mind. But you can look it up in the catechism. And I think originally euthanasia was for people that are really sick or disabled in some form. Um, but now I think they offer it for anyone, for anything. And and that's not okay. Um, we need to lovingly speak up. So my friend and her husband lovingly spoke up to the father-in-law and said, we don't want you to do this. We love you and we will take care of you. And he said, okay, I won't, I'll change the date. He like had a date set and he's like, I'll put it back, but I don't want to be here much longer. Like if I don't die naturally by the end of the month, I'm going to just go ahead and set a date for next month. And so she told us, and we have this whole network, beautiful network of women praying, praying and praying for her and her father-in-law and her family. And on the 31st, on the 31st, her family, he took a turn for the worst. Her family was praying the chaplet of divine mercy and her father-in-law passed. And if that's not just God's goodness and mercy and kindness, like our Lord is so charitable and so merciful. And I think that was a, I don't know if it, if it was a gift for the man, for the man that was going to go through with the euthanasia, or if it was a gift for the son and daughter-in-law um, or the grandchildren that they didn't have to, I don't know, but it was something beautiful, probably a gift for all of the above. Um, but life is sacred and it is beautiful and we need to respect it. Um, I was just at the hair salon. If you can't tell, my hair doesn't normally look this awesome and amazing. So shout out to my hairdresser. Thank you very much. But when I was at the hairdresser's office, I actually took a picture because I, I wanted to tell Matt about it. There was this older couple and this lady, little old lady with a walker, 
and um, the husband came with her and was sitting with her while he while she was getting her hair done. And I noticed them as they were leaving and I noticed him open the door for her. It's like a double door. So he opens both doors, helps her out. And then I'm watching them as he helps her get into the car and he opens the door. He gets out a stool, sets up a stool down below, gets everything all ready for her, pulls the walker over, has her hold on to the door. And I'm sure he's saying, I can't hear him because I'm inside, but I'm sure he's saying wonderful, beautiful things. Like, I love you, honey, I'm just going to put your walker in the back of the car. He walks around the back of the car, puts it in, helps her into the car, smiling the entire time. And um, and I just said to my hairdresser, I'm like, how beautiful is that? And she's like, yeah. She's like, they're really adorable. He brings her here every week. I was like, really? Every week? And that's when she gets her hair done. She comes weekly to get her hair done. And it's a big outing. And her husband's so loving and kind. And she, the hairdresser said, he's always so loving and supportive. We got to get him his coffee. So we know as soon as they get in, we bring him his coffee. And he sits and drinks his coffee while she gets her hair done and chats with the hairdresser. But I think our world standards would say, no, no, no. It's more loving for that husband to be like, you know what? She's getting old. She can barely walk. Let's just put her down. I'm sorry, that's what you do with a horse. Like if a horse is really sick or been injured, you put it down. And it and it's very sad, but you don't do that with humans. I, I mean, I, I did share that I was offended that my vet said I should put my dog down. That did offend me. But if it was a human, like I brought my daughter in who, hindsight, we think it's either a brain tumor or Lyme's disease. But I have a daughter who got bit by a deer tick and there's marks of it. And I brought her in to the doctor and I can only um, I can only imagine what I would have done if the doctor was like, you know what? It's probably Lyme's disease. We should just put her down. I can give her a shot, kill her right now. No, he didn't do that. He was a great doctor. And he's like, she needs to be on an antibiotic right now. We've got to stop this. Uh, it's too early for, you know, Lyme's to show up. But, he, but he's like, no, 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 we're going to we're going to help. And I just think if we want to help people, if we want to love them, we need to speak truth. OK, so it is never OK euthanasia is never ever okay it is not merciful it is not loving it is making the person not suffer but it's ending their life prior like you and i are not to play god we're not to say when someone should come into the world or when someone should leave th this world um obviously it's different if you have to schedule a c-section you kind of get to pick the date that's fun but <laughs> but we don't get to decide when life begins and when it ends Life begins at the moment of conception. We know that. You and I were conceived in a moment in our mom's wombs. They didn't get to pick the time. Maybe they were really excited. We, we were really excited when we found out we were pregnant. Maybe they weren't. But that's, that's life. Life's happening, right? And death happens when it happens. Um, sometimes people are really young and it's horrible and it's sad and it's, you know, infant death. Uh, what do you call it? SIDS disease. Um, sudden infant death syndrome for little kids like that is horrible and I don't understand it and I've had friends that have gone through that and that is so rough my little Peter almost died multiple times when he was when he was a baby actually he has a birthday tomorrow so if you want to say a prayer for my Peter I'd appreciate it um, and sometimes people leave this world before they should you know whether it's a car wreck whether it's a sickness um, I know a lot of people have lost loved ones in the last year and that's been really hard and it's sad um, and we need to mourn and it's good to mourn. Um, but telling someone we're just going to go ahead and kill you or help you die, that is not loving. It, it's just not. It's not merciful. The loving thing. And so what my friend did, I'm very proud of her. And I'd say her name if I didn't think that would be weird. But my friend, you know who you are, <laughs> who just prayed and didn't give up on her father-in-law. I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed with her and her faith. And I do think that it was a very wonderful, beautiful, merciful thing that her father-in-law just died on his own. And that family didn't have to be put through the, but but I think that the father-in-law, I think what he would, he wanted to spare his children. He wanted to spare them um, death, to spare them any type of suffering. Like if he had to use a walker or they had to help bathe them, he's like, I don't want to put that on you. Like that's part of life. We We should be embracing and helping each other in our sicknesses, right? Um, I've been rather blessed lately with quite a few sicknesses. Um, and I have a friend who also has been quite sick and we help take care of each other's kids. And it's like, it's a gift to be able to serve and help in that. Right. Um, so I don't know if you know of anyone who's considering euthanasia, speak truth.
Do it with love. Be compassionate towards them. But there are other answers. Euthanasia is never loving. It is not merciful. So thank you so much for uh, following this episode. Like, subscribe, share. Hit the subscribe button. Um, share this. Oh, those are my kids calling me, so I really should go now. But um, yeah, Patreon members, thank you so much. Among the Lilies, there, there's a link on here. Um, so thank you so much, and God bless. Have a wonderful weekend.